Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Anabaptist Perspectives. I'm here with Stephen Russell, and you do a lot of teaching here at, at Faith Builders up here in Guys Mills, Pennsylvania. Um, and particularly interesting to me for this episode is you wrote a book on non-resistance called Overcoming Evil God's Way. Mm -hmm. And so I have some friends that aren't, aren't Anabaptists, would not believe in non-resistance. And whenever I mention we should do the way of peace, we should love our enemies, they mm -hmm. always say, well, what about the Old Testament? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so... Yeah, this is kind of a big topic, but I'm curious, the teachings of loving your enemies, that's, that's more, that's all New Testament. That, Jesus kind of, that was a brand new concept Jesus had. Is that actually the case? There are hints and clues of this teaching in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, the Jews were to love their neighbor, their brother, okay? mm -hmm. but they're not told specifically to love those others around them. But there are a lot of things that uh, are in the Old Testament that, that point in the right direct, in this direction of non-resistance. My key point would be that God is working with people who have fallen very far from where they started. Mm. And He's working with them where they're at to get them to the place where the Messiah can come. The Old Testament is a mm. huge struggle with God convincing His people that there is mm. but one God and that they need to live a certain way for their own good. In Deuteronomy, it says these laws mm -hmm. are for your good. It's not God pounding them, obey these laws. It's, I give this to you for your own good. Mm -hmm. But they have to, there's a path they have to, it's like going up a hill. They've got mm -hmm. to get to a certain place, a level, where the Messiah can finally come. Once the Messiah comes, he preaches the Sermon on the Mount and he says, in the Old Testament, you heard this, mm -hmm. and it was necessary, it was useful. It was God working with his people to bring them to a certain place. But now you're here, I'm here, the Messiah is here, mm -hmm. and this is what you are called to do. Um, and if you don't think that these people had really plunged to, the, to, the, uh, to very low places, just read the first couple of chapters of, the, of Genesis. Without the direction of God's law mm -hmm. um, and God's prophets, um, they got so bad that God um, sent the flood to, to purify mm -hmm. the earth. Mm -hmm. And they started on the same path again, and God confused their languages. So um, then finally he picks a, fam a man and mm -hmm. starts a family from Abraham. And with that family, he teaches them mm -hmm. how to live well. But it's a, it's a, it's a progressive thing. And so in the Old Testament, they learn things like love the, your fellow Jews. Mm -hmm. But they also learn things like don't, if you, if you do go to fight, uh, and this is in Deuteronomy 20, I believe, if you do have to go fight, don't be, don't be overly violent, don't destroy where, where not necessary. Mm -hmm offer the city the chance to surrender. So they already had clues mm -hmm. that you weren't to, to, to just be, um, to, to go and uh, kill anybody you could. And even in the conquest of, the, of Canaan, God, it says that God brought them there, the, the Jewish people, when the sins of the Canaanites were finally full, at their full, and they, mm. they need to be punished. But Notice that the Gibeonites mm -hmm. hear what's happening and they, they repent. God didn't want to kill everyone just because they had been sinners. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. one case where they don't resist, where they fool the, fool the Israelites, and, they, and God doesn't say, kill them anyway. There are just a lot of clues like that. This is, yeah. God, this is God bringing His people to a place where they can finally mm -hmm. accept we are supposed to lay our own lives down rather than kill others. Um, also, as you read carefully the Old Testament, when the Jewish people were closest to God, He usually caused their, their enemies to fall on each other rather than <laughs> the Jews have to go mm -hmm. and kill. There is, there's no question, um, even in the Old Testament, that killing badly affects the person who does it. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's pretty obvious. And we just know that too from modern studies, etc. So God in the Old Testament was at work mm. bringing people from a state that um, was very sinful to a place where 
they were uh, much more like he wanted them to be and finally could send the Messiah mm -hmm. so that the Messiah could save us and then call us to live the, the, according to God's heart. Mm -hmm. It's all building up to that capstone of Jesus. It's all building up to that. And mm -hmm. so we have to look at it that way. The early Anabaptists looked at it that way and they said, we do not want to read the Bible as a flat book. In other words, the Old mm. Testament equal to the New. They said the Old Testament is God's work with His people, but now mm -hmm. we see in the New Testament His His uh, full the uh, full the way He really wanted to work with us. And so you read the Old Testament through the New. Mm. And what that okay. meant was in the Old Testament there is a, the the Jewish people fought and they took part in government. Mm -hmm. You don't see that in the New Testament. And so they, they and you, you, what they did was they took Jesus' approach in the Sermon on the Mount. Hmm. You've heard it said, but I say unto you. So they heard the New Testament saying, this is the way mm -hmm. that people can live now that Jesus has come and given us new life. It mm -hmm. wasn't that way in the Old Testament. And so it's a different life um, mm -hmm. moving in the right direction, but it's, it's not... Uh, a life that has the spirit like we do. Mm -hmm. So would you say then that the doctrine of non-resistance is in the Old Testament? And if so, how is it, how is it present? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It isn't just those clues that I was talking about, mm -hmm. um, especially in Isaiah. Micah does it too. Uh, Isaiah is looking forward and mm -hmm. saying there's this day that's going to come when, um, and he uses the imagery of, of animals living peacefully mm -hmm. with each other mm -hmm. and the child can put his hand on the adder's nest and things like that. And uh, so there's this picture of the ultimate goal for, for um, God's people. He also says that we're gonna, in, both in Micah and Isaiah, mm -hmm. that, we're gonna, that we're gonna hammer our, um, our swords and our spears into plows and pruning hooks. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the, it actually is there already, and, but, it's, but it mm -hmm. also says this is gonna come in the future. Uh, and, and it's looking to what happens when you actually become a Christian and you start to lay down your weapons and you mm -hmm. try to bring peace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes good sense. And, and there are different hints throughout, throughout Scripture. You, like, even parts of Proverbs, you'll have a random verse that talks about, oh, you know, different things about peace or mm -hmm. treating your enemies well. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's there. It's kind yeah, of it's scattered there. throughout, but it's, it's there. there. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, Paul quotes from Proverbs about um, heaping coals of fire ah. on, your, on your enemy's head. And it sounds like what, the way Paul uses it, and I think maybe too in mm -hmm. Proverbs, you're to, to embarrass him. I mean, it could sound violent, but <laughs> actually I think it's about, okay, embarrass him by treating him the right way. Yeah, you know, yeah, so. and that's actually an Old Testament passage, yes. which is mm -hmm. very interesting. Yeah. yeah, I think there's even a few verses in Lamentations, I believe, where it talks about this. I, we might yeah. have to look that up, yeah. but there's, there's different scatterings throughout. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. As Christians, our lifestyles are supposed to be a, an extension of our view of God. Mm -hmm. And how, how does all this work out? If we're going to say we're nonviolent, but then we see God very clearly commanding the conquest of Canaan mm -hmm. um, and different other you know, conflicts in history, yes. how does that work with our view of God? Well, um, I don't know how well I've thought about this. I've thought a little <laughs> bit about this. Mm -hmm. uh, first, first of all, I would not say we are nonviolent. I would say that we're non-resistant. See, nonviolent people can resist, and there's a pro when you resist somebody mm -hmm. else, you're going to cause friction, and there can still be fighting. Mm -hmm. The non-resistant person says, I'm willing to lay my life down. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I would actually not use that word, but I also think that when we talk about God and say he's obviously a violent God, I think we're, this is a, a mistake, a category mistake. Mm -hmm. God has made us, he's made everything, he owns us, he, mm -hmm. we belong to him, and he can take care of us or use us as he will. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it is legitimate for him to say this people has sinned so much that I'm going to let another people judge them, conquer them, and judge them mm. that way. I mm. don't think that we can call that, that, that action, that allowance by God, mm -hmm. violence. Violence mm. is when I violate another person, somebody that I, if I don't have the rights over you that God has over everyone. So if I do, if I abuse you, that's violence. Mm -hmm. um, now I haven't, I don't know if, uh, probably somebody's gonna really object to this, but so I, I first of all object to saying that when God does say this group of people must conquer this group, that this is 
violence because he can, he, if he judges a people, mm -hmm. he can do away with them. That's not, mm. it's not a, a violence because mm -hmm. he's not violating them. They belong to him. But you don't belong to me, and if I start beating you up, mm -hmm. then I'm violating you. Mm -hmm. So that's how, I, that's how I see this. I, I think we actually use some words r incorrectly in relation to God. So he has the right, they, he owns the Canaanite people. I think that he gave them opportunity to hear the truth and they, mm -hmm. they went their own way. And at a certain point when, when their injustice reached its peak, he, he used the, Ju the Jewish people to conquer them. Mm -hmm. He didn't even wipe them all out and at least in part that gave some of them an opportunity to turn back to God. Wow. So mm -hmm. um, I, I think we have to recognize in the, in the Old Testament that there, there are violent scenes, yes. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't think that God can be accused of violating other beings mm. like mm. we can. So I, th I know that won't appeal to many people, but mm -hmm. uh, that would be part of my um, understanding of what's happening in the Old Testament. God is not violating. He is not using violence. Mm -hmm. uh, unless you, by that you just mean he, he, allow, he allows the Israelites to use force to either drive out or kill. Mm -hmm. Well, that's another thing. Um, if the Israelites had originally obeyed God, it sounds like he would have slowly driven the Canaanites out of their land with, with wild animals and, and insects and things. Okay. But okay. they didn't. They disobeyed. And so hmm. they got the, the Israelites had a judgment against them that they had to go to war and that they had to die themselves. Oh. So there's, it's, it's a really complex issue mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. of a lack of obedience on all the sides. The Canaanites mm -hmm. going their own way, the Canaanites mm -hmm. doing horrible things like killing their own children to try to get the gods to do what they wanted. Mm -hmm. And then finally the Israelites coming out of Egypt, God saving them, and they see his mighty hand and yet they disobey. And then they suffer for that as well. It's it's as if they had done what they what God had said. The, I, I think there would have been more conversion, less mm -hmm. violence, less bloodshed mm -hmm. if they had gone in when they were told to, uh, and the and God sent the the wasps and the bees in front of them. I think every, you know we know that the mm -hmm. the Canaanites and the Philistines were watching this because when the um, when the Israelites went over the Jordan. Uh, the Philistines said, these are those people that 40 years ago left Egypt, oh, and wow. now look what their God is doing. And they were scared. They knew what had happened 40 years ago, mm -hmm. and they're still coming. They're still they're heading our way. And um, so if the Israelites had been more obedient, everything would have worked out so different, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. I think. That, that makes sense. I, I see what you're getting out there. Yeah. I have to admit the Old Testament is... Um, it difficult in places, um, yeah. and that's yeah. partly because we now understand God's heart, and we're able with His Spirit to to live it, mm -hmm. to live more more what is really His heart. They weren't, yeah, they weren't ready. They weren't able to. Yeah, that makes sense. In brief, what would you say to uh, another Christian who might be watching this or listening to this, who hasn't yet come to the conviction of mm -hmm. non-resistance? Well, um, I would ask him or her to um, look at the life of the Savior carefully, see what he calls us to, notice um, both how he and his followers um, were looking for something different than than what, what was normally expected. So the Jewish mm -hmm. people, when Jesus w seemed to be the Messiah, they were expecting him to raise an army and kick the Romans out. This is what happened. Mm -hmm. Jesus loved the Romans, in fact. And, and he, when he was judged, he told Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. That's why my people are not fighting. Mm -hmm. So I would call them to that, but I would also ask them to read Romans 12 and 13 very carefully and watch the pronouns. Romans 12 is all about how we Christians mm -hmm. should live. And that is where it calls us to, 
as much as it lies within you, live at peace with all men. Mm -hmm. It's all you. You do this. Mm -hmm. Then the first uh, seven verses of 13 are about the government, and it's all you. They. It's what they are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. They are God's ministers f for wrath and to call people to live well. But then it, it doesn't tell us where to be that. It says, and hmm. you Christians, honor them, obey them, pay the taxes. It's clear there are two different groups of people met. And then mm -hmm. after, chap after verse 7 in chapter 13, it goes back to, uh, oh, no man, anything but love, I think is what that, how it starts. And it, so it goes back to you, huh. do these things. Mm -hmm. So my call would be, um, go to Romans, read 12 and 13 very carefully. Notice that God is calling you to mm -hmm. lay your life down, to as much as lies within you, be at peace with all men. Um, mm -hmm. Overcome evil, uh, not by doing something against a person, but by love. And then that little piece is about how the government is supposed to do things. And it's not us, it's them. Mm -hmm. They And we're called to such different things. We are called to woo people into the kingdom mm -hmm. and then teach them all the all things. The government is called to to ask people to live as well as they can, but if they won't, it has the sword mm -hmm. to uh, keep people in line. T totally, you can't do those two things. The same person can't do those two things. Yeah. So I think Romans 12 and 13 are two of the key places to read. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're a Bible-believing Christian, read those really carefully. Notice who it's directed to. Mm -hmm. the, those, so it's first the Christian, then the state, and then the Christian again. Mm -hmm. That makes good sense. Yeah, wonderful. Was there anything else you would like to add? Uh, no, I don't think of anything else. Okay, right wonderful. Well, thank you so much for your time You're and um, uh, especially the amount of time you've put into to writing your book. We'll make sure and, and put a link to that. So okay. if people want to study it out more, they can buy a copy um, and really read up on this. I okay. think this is really important for people to wrestle through these things. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, thank you for helping us to, to make this episode. Okay. Yeah.